Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me today. We're gonna work through a flow or an advanced sequence for Ekapada Galavasana, which is flying pigeon. So it's an arm balance that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, we're gonna work into it with a cool transition um, as well if you wanna take it there. Make sure you have a couple of blocks and I would suggest a towel. It is a hot day here in LA, um, but even regardless of that, you're gonna get sweaty. All right, let's get started in child's pose. In this variation, bring your knees together, your ankles together, and find your way down into child's pose. So your spine is rounding a little here. Pulling your hips back towards your heels. And using these opening moments just to drop into your practice, to drop into your body, maybe for the first time today. And begin to observe your breath. Begin to observe your body. And just allowing yourself to be as you are without needing to change anything just yet. And as you feel ready, starting to lengthen your inhales, lengthening your exhales, and cultivating a connection to breath, something that will carry you through this practice. And as we move into more challenging sequences, as the body begins to heat up, the breath will change. So just observe when that happens and perhaps taking a break if it gets too much or backing out of a pose a little so that you can regain control of the breath. We'll take three more breaths here. Shift into tabletop position, hands and knees. Separating the knees now to hips with distance apart. We'll take some scapular push-ups here. So you're gonna drop the shoulder blades towards one another or squeeze them towards one another. And then really press the floor away from you and feel the shoulder blades spread. Now work to plug your shoulder blades back and down. So it's just those three little actions. We're gonna sink, we're gonna press, and then plug. Again, sink, press, and plug. So continuing to do those three little movements. And if it's your first time doing these, it can feel a little bit weird because we tend to wanna to make this into like a hybrid cat-cow situation. But you'll notice that I'm not you know, moving into my lower back. I'm not taking these into big uh, back bends really trying to just work the health of the shoulders here. So you can think of this a little bit like flossing your teeth, right? So we're just doing this nice, healthy work for the shoulders. If that's feeling all right and you wanna take the last couple from plank, go for it. Obviously a little bit more challenging. Let's do one more. And then downward facing dog. Tucking toes, lifting the hips up and back. You might wish to pedal out through the feet here. Maybe nod and shake your head. 
And again, just like in child's pose, take a good few breaths here just to settle in. So we don't have to arrive in a pose perfectly, right? There's no such thing. It's a journey and it's a whole process. So each moment, each breath, the pose is gonna change a little bit. And you're just paying attention to all of the feedback that your body's giving you. How does this downward facing dog feel for you today? What's happening with your shoulders, your spine, your hips, the backs of your legs, maybe your ankles. And really starting to drop into a rhythm of breath that feels good in your body here. Well, I'm always a fan of Ujjayi Pranayama, as we move into uh, the deeper flow sequences, if you feel like it's just making you too hot, you can always drop that breath. You can always exhale through the mouth if you need. The last couple of breaths here. Walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Circle out through the wrists a couple of times. Maybe flick your fingers. You could even rest the tops of your hands onto the floor and stretch out through the forearms and the wrists. Ragdoll position, holding opposite elbows. Maybe swaying a little, maybe bending one knee and straightening the other leg. Notice where or when you're moving out of habit rather than being in tune with what your body actually needs. Change which forearms on top. It'll feel a little awkward. So relax your neck, allow your ears to fall away from your shoulders, head is heavy. Hands back to the floor, downward facing dog. Now rooting down, evenly through both hands, lift your right leg up. Bend the knee, open out through the hip. So both arms are straight and strong and you can take some circles here, moving your hip in one direction. Keep your front ribs drawing in and then moving that leg back in the other direction. You'll step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Walk your left foot back a little bit more and then lower the back knee down. So you want to be a little bit more on the left thigh rather than directly on the kneecap. As you inhale, reach your right arm up, take a big stretch, and then tap your right elbow to the inside of your right foot. Four more, inhale, reach, and tap. Four, three, get nice and low, two, Last one. Right hand comes back down. Now hug your right knee towards your right upper arm. Reach your left arm up. So you're opening up towards the left now. Take an inhale. As you exhale, thread your left arm underneath your right leg. Four more. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, thread through. Four, three. Two. Last one. Left hand back down, step back, downward facing dog. Pedal out through the feet a couple of times and just notice the difference between the left and right side. 
And again, pressing evenly through both hands, lift the left leg up, bend the knee, open out through the hip, circle it out a couple of times. Take that circle back in the other direction. Keep pressing the floor away from you so you're not sinking into the shoulders. And you'll step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Walk your right foot back a little bit more and then lower down onto your right knee. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, tap left elbow to the inside of the foot. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. We tap it down and then left hand comes back down. So press your left knee into your left upper arm and the arm into your knee. Reach the right arm up. As you exhale, you'll thread it underneath your left leg. Really reach. Four more. Inhale. Four, three. Two. Last one. Right hand comes back down, step back, downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet again. Shift into plank position. We're gonna hold and breathe in this first high plank. So really press the floor away from you. Really press down through your finger pads, your finger knuckles. And even though there's a sense of pressing the floor away from you, at the same time, think of lengthening your sternum forwards. So you're not sinking through the shoulder blades, but you're also not trying to just completely cat-like the spine here. So there's a sense of pulling the sternum forwards, crown of the head forwards, and then press back through your heels. Take another full breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift into plank position. Find that line again. Pull the navel up. Squeeze your butt. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Lengthen through the sternum. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower chaturanga. Inhale, press back up, high plank. Downward facing dog. So remember, you can always modify, you can use your knees. <clears throat> Inhale, come into plank position. Spin your inner elbow creases forwards. Inhale, shift forwards. Lower chaturanga. Press back up, high plank. Lower chaturanga, pause. Release to your belly. Untuck your toes, fingertip cobras, hands wider than the mat. Inhale, peel your chest up. Strong legs, squeeze your butt and release back down. Two more, inhale and exhale. I'm gonna hold on this last one, inhale, roll up. Drop your left shoulder, look over your right. Back through center, drop the right shoulder, look over the left. Back through center, lower all the way down. Thumbs in line with your low ribs. Tuck your toes, lift your kneecaps. Take an inhale. Exhale, push up high plank. Don't drop your head. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet all the way to your hands. We'll find another forward fold here. You might wanna circle out the wrists again. If you wanna interlace the hands behind you, or you could do what I'm doing here. I like to take my hands behind my head. So we're gonna to begin to flow in a moment. So can you let this be soft? And rather than thinking of needing to fold deeper here or straighten the legs more, just let this be gentle. You're gonna work really dynamically in a moment. Release your arms, keep them nice and heavy and then begin to roll yourself all the way up to stand. Shoulders, neck and head, the last to come up. Gather your hands into prayer, close your eyes. Perhaps setting an intention for your practice here today. Inhale deeply. Open mouth, exhale. Release your arms and allow your eyes to flutter open.
Inhales, you sweep your arms up, big stretch, reach up. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forwards, Uttanasana. Inhale as you lengthen halfway, pause here for a moment. So really feel your legs firing, inner thighs pulling in, chest is lifting, and you're really light on your fingers wherever they are. So feel the muscles of your back body working here. Take another full breath in, exhale, fold. Let's just do that one more time. Inhale, lift up halfway, pause. Keep extending through the crown of your head. Front ribs pull in, last inhale, exhale, fold. Step back to downward facing dog. Lift your right leg. Step right foot to the outside of your right hand, lizard. Step back, down dog. Right shin comes forwards, half pigeon. Back to downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, step into lizard. Back to down dog. Step into half pigeon left shin forwards. Downward facing dog. Inhale, shift into plank position. Bend your elbows two inches, pause. Press back up. Bend your elbows two inches, pause. Hover just off the floor. Press back up, high plank. Lower halfway chaturanga. High plank. I know it's getting hard. We're gonna hover just off the mat. Find that line, release to your belly. Thumbs in line with the low ribs. Inhale, peel your chest up. Feel the muscles of your spine working and release back down. Two more like that. Inhale, roll up. Try to squeeze your hands back to your hips, strong legs, and release. Last one, inhale and to your belly. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, inhale. Exhale, push up, high plank, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. We'll lift your right leg. Exhale, knee to nose, pause. Now shift a little further forwards, really press the floor away from you. Squeeze the knee in a little bit tighter. Step right foot to right thumb, left foot to left thumb. Inhales, you lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up, big stretch. Hands to prayer. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step back, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts. Step into lizard. Back to dog. Step into half pigeon. Back to dog. Lift the right leg. Step into lizard. Back to dog. Into half pigeon. Back to dog. Inhale, shift into plank position. Pause. Bend your elbows two inches. Press back up. Bend your elbows two inches. Press back up. Bend your elbows two inches and then hover just off the mat. Press back up about half of the way. Hover just off the mat, lower to your belly. One cobra, inhale, peel up. Maybe it's starting to get a little deeper. Release to your belly. Tuck toes, lift your knees, push up high plank. Downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. Lift your left leg. Exhale, knee to nose, pull it in, pause. Shift the weight further forwards. Again, thinking sternum forwards. Step left foot to left thumb, right foot to right thumb. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. Three rounds, Surya A. Inhales, you reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, through your back bend, maybe up dog. 
Take it back, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. So just noticing what's starting to change and shift. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards. Take a little jump to the top of the mat. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. Again, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. So as you're starting to feel a little warmer, you might be adding in little handstand hops to get to the top of the mat. Be smart about your practice. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards. Take a little jump to the top of the mat. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. Last one, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Through your back bend. Downward facing dog. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards. Travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand, reach up. Hands to prayer. Release your arms. I'm gonna move into Surya B to continue to build heat and rhythm. Bend your knees, chair pose, reach your arms up. So we'll go slow on this first round. Just giving you yourself some time to refine the poses. I don't want you to feel like you have to rush into each shape. Check in with the legs. How are they feeling? How are the hips feeling? Quads. Take another full breath in. Exhale, fold. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga nice and light. Through the back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin your left toes out, step your right foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one, and pause. So a couple of breaths here to find your way into the shape. What does your warrior one look like today? Right, so maybe different from yesterday. Take another full breath in. Exhale, hands down, same breath out is chaturanga. Through your back bend, downward facing dog. Spin the right toes out, step the left foot up. Inhale brings you up, warrior one, pause. So what little refinements do you need to make in your warrior one? Not so that it ends up looking like mine or perhaps a picture you've seen online, but so that it works for your body. Where can you go a little deeper? Maybe where do you need to back out a little? Take another full breath in. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. It's a long exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog and breathe. So the next three rounds we'll move through on the breath. You really wanna try and lengthen the breath so that you have time for each movement. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach the arms up, strong arms, strong feet, rise to stand, Tadasana. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. 
Inhale, up dog. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Downward facing dog. Spin the right toes out, step the left foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down through your vinyasa. So you're using downward facing dog here to catch your breath. Maybe you need an exhale through the mouth. Bend the knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chapo, sit low, reach up. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Downward facing dog. Spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog. Spin the right toes out, step the left foot up. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog, breathe. So if you're anything like me, definitely starting to feel that heat now. Bend the knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach the arms. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Last one, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog, spin the left toes out, step the right foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, same breath out, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog, right toes out, left foot up. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, chaturanga. Inhale, back bend. Downward facing dog and breathe. Maybe opening and closing your mouth a few times. Releasing any tension in your jaw and neck. And bend the knees, inhale, look forwards. Travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, sit low, reach the arms. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Whew, I'm just gonna wipe my face. It's a little warm. All right, Tadasana. Bring your hands onto your hips. You're gonna stand into your right leg, bend and lift your left knee. And then externally rotate the left leg so it goes out to the left. And then find your way into tree pose without using your hands. So maybe the foot won't come up as high, that's totally fine. And then you can either reach your arms up or find hands in prayer. Steady gaze, steady breath. Strong through your standing leg. So you're really lifting up through the inner arch, feeling the right kneecap lift, that thigh turn on. And then bring your hands back to prayer at heart center if they're not already. You're pretty much gonna stay in tree pose, but just lift your foot away from your thigh. 
Good, and then slowly traveling through space, you're gonna spin the left knee forwards, the foot back, and you'll slowly kick the left leg all the way back, finding your way into high lunge. Step back, reach the arms up. Draw the right hip back, left hip forwards. And then if you can maintain that kind of position through your hips and pelvis, maybe straightening through the back leg, getting the stretch through the front of your left hip. Pull up through the lower belly. Last full breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Straighten through your front leg for a beat and then re-bend the right knee. You're gonna hold opposite elbows up overhead in this warrior two. Pull the front ribs in. So if you find that lifting the arms up pulls your pelvis forwards and your ribs out, just bring the arms down a little bit. Nice deep bend in the right knee. Feel your feet pulling in, squeezing your right hip, your right butt cheek on. Reach your arms back out, straighten through your front leg, keep squeezing your right hip. Inhale, reach forwards, trikonasana, right hand to your shin, maybe to a block, reach the left arm up. And then let's add in a little bit more of a side stretch. Reach your left arm forwards, wrap the pinky finger down. And then reach from your left fingers to the outer edge of your left foot. If you wanna add a little bit of extra fire, reach your right arm forwards as well. Breathe three, two, last one. Half moon, look down and forwards, right hand out in front of you, lift the left leg. So you start with your right hand down, really work on refining this pose. And obviously that's got a lot to do with your right hip. But I also want you to think about as you press the left heel back, extend more through the crown of the head. So try not to let the head just drop. And then as you fire up the leg, your left hand, your left arm, maybe you start to hover your right hand away from the floor. So it's this sense of lifting and expanding that helps you to lift the bottom hand. Warrior two, step all the way back. Straighten through your front leg. Turn the right toes in. So toes in, heels out, hands to your hips. Inhales, you lift the chest. Exhale, fold. So option here for prasarita. Uh, sorry, for tripod headstand. So hands are down, make sure that you can see your fingers. Hug your elbows in. So either staying here in the forward fold, or you can either straddle up, or if you like to lift, one knee onto your upper arm and then the other, you can do that and come up. If you're pretty solid here in your tripod headstand, you're gonna bend your knees and tap your knees to your upper arms. Don't lift the head, just tap them and then lift the legs all the way back up. Two more times, tap the knees to your upper arms, keep your elbows pulling in, lift the legs back up. Last one, make sure there's very little pressure in your head, your, your neck is feeling okay. And then you'll straddle the legs back out and lower all the way down. Take a breath or two here in your forward fold. Strong feet, come all the way back up. Warrior two, re-bend the front knee. Flip the front palm, inhale, reverse, reach up and back. Hands to the floor. So you either straight through a vinyasa or step your right foot back about a third of the way. Straight arms, lift your left leg. Take a couple of little handstand hops here if you like. So you can let it be messy. You might just be starting your journey. 
If you're a little more experienced, perhaps getting a little bit of hang time here. And then we're gonna take this all the way through our vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Bend the knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold. Raise to stand, reach up, hands to prayer. So hands onto your hips. I'm gonna stand into the left foot this time. Bend and lift your right knee. Get your balance, there's no rush. Then you'll externally rotate this right hip. And then you'll, without using your hands, bring your right foot to your inner left thigh. Be okay with the fact that it may not be as high as it might normally be. And then either hands into prayer or reach your arms up. And it's funny how we can get really fixated on little things like, oh, but it feels better when my heel is up higher or, you know, I know I can get this higher, but it's just a different lesson. Sometimes we might use the hand to get the foot up higher. Today I'm specifically asking you not to, just so that we can work a little deeper into the hips. Strong through the standing leg. Hands come back to prayer at heart center. So you're gonna stay in tree pose, but just bring your right foot away from the left thigh. Again, re-get your balance. You'll spin your right knee forwards, your right foot back. And then super, super slowly kick the right leg all the way back. We're gonna meet in high lunge position, step back. Reach your arms up. Adjust your feet and hips as you need here. I always like to begin with a little bend in the back knee. It's just gonna help me set my hips and pelvis. And then if you can maintain that, start to press your right heel back, straighten the back leg. You might feel a deeper stretch through the front of your right thigh. Warrior two, opening out. Let's straighten through the front leg for a beat and then re-bend the left knee. Nice, deep warrior two here. And then take your arms up. You're gonna hold opposite elbows again, but this time with the awkward forearm on top. So adjust the height of your arms here as you need. Pull the front ribs in. Squeeze your left butt cheek on. And as we move eventually into triangle and half moon, the only thing that changes with the left leg is that it will straighten. So you still wanna have this action of the left glute being engaged and strong. Straighten the arms back out, straighten your front leg, trikonasana, reach forwards, left hand down, right arm up, use a prop if you need. You're cutting the left hip back. This right hip rolls forwards a little. Reach your right arm forwards. Really find that stretch as you reach through your right fingers and press into the outer edge of the right foot. From here, maybe reaching your left arm forwards as well. Breathe three, two, and one, look forwards, Ada Chandrasana, left hand out in front of you onto the floor or a block. Lift your right leg up. So making sure that the left toes are still facing forwards. And again, it's not just you chancing yourself by lifting the hand and lowering it down again. I want you to feel this action of as you expand, as you get bigger, then maybe you just start to float the left hand. Keep extending through the crown of the head, pressing back through your right heel. Warrior two, step all the way back. I'm literally sweating all over the place. 
All right, straighten through the front leg and turn your left toes in. I, of course, picked a really hot day to do this. Hands to your hips. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, fold, prasarita, hands to the floor. So chill out in your fold. If you worked tripod, you're gonna come back into it with an option to add on. So if you're coming upside down, find your way up. Make sure your shoulders are happy, your neck is happy. And if you wanna add on, you're gonna bend your knees, tap them to your upper arms. Now either lift the hips and legs back up or from here, Bakasana. So as you squeeze your knees to your upper arms, you start to lift the head up. Keep squeezing your heels towards your butt. Find your crow pose. And then carefully lowering the head back down. Make sure it's in a happy place before you then lift the hips up. Lift the legs and then carefully take your time to come down. Chill out in this fold for a little bit. Maybe a little sway. So that's a lot, obviously for the shoulders and the head. You just wanna take your time here so you don't get dizzy. When you're ready, coming back up, warrior two. Flip the front palm, inhale, reverse. Cartwheel your hands to the floor, either straight through a vinyasa or slide your left foot back about a third of the way, lift the right leg up. So you can continue with these little handstand hops. Keep the arms straight and strong. We're gonna come straight through a vinyasa. So if you can handstand back, go for it. Otherwise, step back, vinyasa. Three breaths here in dog. Bend your knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale as you lengthen, exhale, fold. Chair pose is where we're going. Sit low, reach your arms up. And then pull your hips back and down, back and down, back and down until you can come all the way down to a seat. So you'll set up for Dandasana. Legs extending out in front of you. And I want you to bring your hands behind you. Now your hands can go back as much as you need. And you can lean back in this pose if you need. What I want is for you to keep length through your spine so you're not here. If you're leaning back, bring your hands back and then lift the chest. So there's length through the lower back. So you can play around until you've found like a good position for yourself. And then we're gonna lift the right leg, keep it straight, lift it as high as you can without compromising the spine. And then you'll bend your right knee and squeeze it as much as you can into your chest, right? Keep the spine long. And then you're gonna externally rotate your right leg. So your knee goes out to the right, keep the spine lifted. Draw the knee back into your chest, kick the right leg forwards and lower it down. Whew. We have four more of those. <laughs> Lift the right leg, pull the knee in. Externally rotate the right leg. Try to squeeze that knee towards your right wrist. Lift it all the way back up and extend it forwards. Whew. Inhale, lift the right leg. Pull the knee in. Externally rotate it. Oh. Lift it back up and extend. Lower it down. Last two. Lift. Pull it in, externally rotate it, lift the chest, draw the knee back in, kick the right leg forwards and lower down. Thank goodness, we just got one more on this side. Lift the right leg, pull the knee in, straight spine, take the right leg out to the right, lift it back up, 
kick the right leg forwards and lower it down. <laughs> so you're gonna make fists with your hands and just massage out your right quad. So that's not obviously really like a yoga move per se or a yoga pose, but it was a really nice way to prep your body for where we're going. We have to do the left side. I mean, you don't really. You know, you can fast forward. I would never know, but you would know. All right, so reset up. I feel like this is gonna be very challenging. All right, so lengthen through the lower back. Chest lifts. Lift the left leg as much as you can. Remember, if you're rounding through the lower back, take the hands back more. And then squeeze the left knee into your chest. Yep, there it is. <laughs> and then we'll externally rotate the left leg. Draw the knee back into the chest and kick the leg forwards, lower down. Lift the left leg, bend the knee, pull it in towards your chest. Draw the navel back as you do that. And then left knee out towards the left. Lift the knee back up, kick the left leg forwards and lower down. Just three more, readjusting as you need. Taking it out, lifting back up, extend the left leg forwards and lower. Last two. It's one of these things where you're like, why is this so hard? <laughs> Lift the leg, bend the knee, take it out. Lift it back up, extend the left leg and release. Again, make fists and massage out your leg. Shift a little further forwards on your mat. We're gonna rock and roll up and down the length of your spine. Make yourself into a nice tight wall. Chat pose. Rise to stand, Tadasana. Bring one hand to your belly, one to your heart. Take an inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. One more like that, inhale. And exhale. Release your arms and allow your eyes to flutter open. Bend your knees, chair pose. Figure four chair, so crossing left ankle over your right thigh. Pull your hips back and down. So we're gonna make this a little more dynamic. Bring your hands into prayer, keep your right knee bent, and then lift your left shin up towards your hands. Lower the shin back down, reach your arms up. Hands to prayer, lift the left shin, lower it down, reach the arms. Hands to prayer, lift the shin, lower it down. We've got two more, reach. Hands to prayer, I think this is number four. So I'm still bending into the right knee. Last one. Hands to prayer, lift the left shin and then extend it all the way back. High lunge position, reach on up. Straighten through your front leg here for a beat. Rebend the knee. Open up, warrior two. Extended side angle pose, so right forearm can go to your thigh, or maybe right hand to the floor, reaching the left arm forwards. So what I like about having the hand to the inside, and it's not that it's necessarily right or better, but for where we're going, you're able to squeeze your right knee into your upper arm and then press your arm back into the knee. So again, just kind of opening up through the inner thigh. Warrior two, straighten through the front leg, half moon, so reach out. Maybe you're gonna find the float this time. If you would like, add in chapasana, bending the left knee, squeezing your heel to your butt and bringing your left hand to your left foot. Spin your chest to the left and continue to extend through the crown of your head.
If you've got the back foot, re-extend the leg. Standing split, so hands to the floor. You're squaring off your hips and your torso back down to the mat. Pull your belly in and as you fold, lift your left leg a little higher. So you'll either stay here for another couple of breaths before taking it back through a vinyasa. You could handstand hop, or for some of you, you're gonna plant the hands down, bend this left knee. So you, again, it's an external rotation. You're gonna lift up onto the ball of the right foot and maybe puppy press up to your handstand. And vinyasa when you're ready. It's also a nice bail out option. <laughs> Couple of deep breaths here. And the benefit of course of these videos is that you can pause it. If you're kind of on a roll and you're really workshopping through something, pause and play around. Bend the knees, inhale, look forwards, travel to the top of the mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold. Chapo, sit low, reach the arms. Right ankle over left thigh. So the left knee stays bent and in chair the whole time. You'll bring your hands into prayer at heart center and hover your right shin. Place the shin back down, reach the arms up. That's one. Hands to prayer, lift the shin, two. Lift up. Pull it in, hover, three. Hard on this side for me. Lift the arms, pull it back in, lift the shin, four. Last one, reach up. Hands to prayer, we're gonna hover it and slowly extend the right leg all the way back, high lunge position. Straighten through the front leg for a beat. Rebend the knee, warrior two. Extended side angle, Uttita Parjva Konasana. Warrior two. Straighten through the front leg, half moon. Reach out and forwards, maybe hovering the left hand. Scooping the left hip back in. And then perhaps adding in Chapasana. Re-extend the right leg. Hands come down, square off your hips, standing splits. Pull the belly up and back. So you're folding nice and deeply over the left leg. And then as your chest pulls down, lift your right leg a little bit higher. A last couple of breaths here. Or you're gonna take some handstand hops, perhaps adding in your puppy press. So if you're pressing, it's your right knee going out to the side, and then you pull up onto the ball of the left foot. Ooh, maybe it's a little messy. <laughs> and you can always handstand back through your vinyasa. Let's take an inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Lower down onto your knees and your shins. Circle out through your wrists a couple of times. Okay, so we're gonna move into the arm balance, Ekka Padagalavasana. Because this is an advanced practice, I'm not gonna give you all the modifications along the way. I would expect that you know how to modify if you're taking an advanced practice. So we'll work Ekapada Galavasana on both sides. We're gonna try and hold for five breaths, right? And I know that some of you are like, yeah, but I wanna transition into this. It's coming, right? 
really try to hold for five, maybe even eight breaths so that you're building strength in the pose and you're not just passing through it. So we're gonna do it uh, both sides, take a little break, and then we'll do it where we can add in a tripod headstand, okay? And of course, if you're like, no Jess, I wanna tap out now, take a cool down, a shavasana. Thanks for joining in. All right, if you're coming into the arm balances, let's come to the top of the mat. So you're gonna cross left ankle over right thigh. Pull the hips back and down. So I know you guys have probably done this a ton. You might be really used to coming into the pose, but it doesn't mean that you should skip the setup. Now, what I will say is that depending on your body proportion, depending on whether you're male or female, maybe you've got a little bit uh, extra assets in the chest, you're gonna have to play around with the positioning of this shin, right? So don't be afraid to kind of move around and actually before you even come into the shape, get into a position that feels the most comfortable. Well, as comfortable as this can be, right? So if it's kind of cutting you off at the chest, maybe you need to take it down a little lower. Maybe you need to angle the leg a little bit more. And so what I want you to focus on when we come into this pose, so what I've been talking about is the, the line of energy. So quite often, and I think it's because we use this as a transition to tripod, the head goes straight down and the leg kicks up. And it's not a bad thing, but I want you to think, at least for the first couple of breaths, more of chest and head forwards, right? So as that lengthen forwards, and then the left leg, oh, the back leg will lift off the floor, okay? So we're coming into the shape, hugging the left foot around the right upper arm. So my head is going forwards, it's not just dropping, and then I'm pulling up through the belly, lifting the right foot, and then extending it back. Breathe. And release. Good, and so obviously you'll find that one side is a little bit easier than the other. And it will be really interesting to hear from you guys what you thought about actually just holding the pose. Because um, even if you weren't gonna go to tripod, sometimes we come into the arm balance and like half a second later you're in chaturanga. You actually haven't held the pose and been able to experience the journey in the pose. All right, so changing sides. When you're ready, lifting up. Chest pulls forwards a little bit more. Keep that back leg super active, super strong. And release. So while you guys are resting your wrists or circling them out, I'm gonna show you the assisted setup for Ekapadagalavasana to tripod headstand. If it's already part of your practice, you're just gonna go straight into it. If you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, it's always good to err on the side of caution, particularly when you're playing around with tripod. There's a little more pressure through your neck. If you do wanna give it a go, you're gonna set up your blocks, highest height, your hands are gonna come behind the blocks. So my index fingers are pretty much in the middle of the block. And then I'm gonna take left ankle over right thigh. This is a really similar setup that you've probably done for a lot of other arm balances. The blocks are gonna take the weight off your shoulders, right? But keep your hands active and then you'll pull the leg back. From here, tuck your chin to your chest. Keep lifting that leg so that the crown of the head can come down. And then you're gonna come up into your tripod. From here, you pull the left knee back into your chest, similar to what we did before. And then the left knee goes out, again, like what we did when we was in that seated drill. And you're gonna bring your left shin 
onto your upper arms. Now, if you prefer, bend the right knee as well to help guide it down. So my right leg was literally putting my left leg in place and then press the shoulders into the blocks to lift back up and release. So these blocks and this drill, super helpful for giving you the mechanics of what's going on without having to like grunt your way through it. So definitely try it out um, if you wanna see what it feels like to come up. So you would do that on both sides. I'm gonna show you what it looks like without the block. I'll do it on the other leg. So I'm finding my way into the arm balance. Now I tuck my chin to my chest, my leg goes up. And then from there, I lift the right leg. And then it's exactly what we did in our seated position. We're pulling the right knee into the chest. And then it goes out, it externally rotates. I then bend the left knee and I guide my right shin down onto my arms. From here, when I lift up the head, I gotta kick the left leg back and release. Whew. So you guys, you can pause, you can play around for a little longer. I'm cooked. So I'll show you the cool down that I have planned for this. You'll take your blocks. You're gonna lie back over the blocks. So we did a ton of that kind of pressing the floor, ooh, pressing the floor away from you action. You can see how sweaty I am, I fall off the block. So taking this chest opener is just a really nice way to open the chest. <laughs> Take whatever leg variation feels good. And I would suggest here either cactusing your arms or you can hold opposite elbows up overhead. And if there's one piece of advice that I can give you, um, it's that if you're really working pretty like, uh, with a lot of dedication towards things like arm balances and inversions, if you're practicing maybe four to six times a week, plus you know any little bits that you do on the side where you just take 10 minutes to practice your handstands or something, that's all amazing and great and wonderful. But you also wanna try to match that with your counter poses. And I know that can seem really boring when you have this goal in mind, but my body has um, gone through some imbalances from not countering correctly off for long enough. So just do yourself a favor and give yourself a break after you've worked hard and counter the actions so that you can, you know, bring about a little more balance. Change which forearms on top if you're holding opposite elbows. Bring your arms back down alongside you and you'll lift yourself up off the blocks. So if you have the time, you might work through some bridge or wheel poses. Again, that would be really nice counter work. Um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna just guide you through a twist. So you'll extend the left leg, hug your right knee in, and then draw the right knee over to the left, right arm out to the right. I just got a, a big crack in my back. Come back 
come back up through center. Extend your right leg, hug your left knee into your chest, big squeeze. Draw your left leg over to the right, left arm out to the left. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Coming all the way back through center. Take a final symmetrical finishing pose. Maybe it's happy baby or a hug of the knees into your chest. And when you're ready, you'll make your way into your final resting pose, Shavasana. Try to stay for about three to five minutes so that your body can really relax and reap the benefits of the practice. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Please do get in touch if you have any questions or comments. Namaste.